plan on doing, but uh, you know what I need too? I need I need a whiteboard. Coach, we can get you a whiteboard, Coach. Get well, you I think, one. I think my wife might be able to get it for me, and and uh, if she doesn't mind. But uh, how do you blow this thing up again? You want to blow the screen up? Yeah, so it, it's just me and you on this little screen instead of my uh, – there she goes. You got it? I don't know how you do it. How, how, do you, how do you widen it out? Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. Stream this to your audience. Having issues, present settings. I'm a I guru. think you just click on the screen. Okay, don't don't yeah, don't call me a screw a guru anymore. I ain't no guru. I'm just a you you're know, just a guy, coach. Just a guy. I don't know how you do this. I, we did it. We did it once. Thank you. Is that so you want to make it? Up? You want to make the screen bigger? Yeah. Well, you know, just so that. So that if I'm showing you some some drawings and stuff, you see that black pen on, over there? It's right there by my medicine. And maybe you could give me some paper towels. Hey, this is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic podcast sponsored by First Down Playbook, Rack Coach, Tip of the Spear, The Top Hopper, and Sports Workbook. Use the codes below to save today. Sports Workbook, CFC, SW, save 15%. Top Hop, save 5% today. And on First Down Playbook, Charlie Coyner, my friend from Virginia, save 25% on a team membership with the code CFC25. All right, Coach, I think you can make your screen bigger by – you just click on it, Coach. I've, I've been clicking away. It ain't doing nothing. Click, double click right underneath where it says. All right, I got you. Podcast. Okay. I kind of like looking at myself, you know. You look good, Coach. Yeah, I do. I do. I know. I, yeah. And Coach doesn't understand why he's back on here, but I've had numerous people ask me to get Coach Strollo back on, and we've already got some questions. But Coach Strollo's got something he wants to talk about that he didn't plan on talking about. So I'm very interested. He's met Wyatt Bode from Minnesota, who's a welder. They're probably going to build a bridge here soon. He, he, he's a very nice guy. We, and we didn't meet. We just talked on the phone. But, you know, I, I was thinking about this the other day. You, you know, I'm a, I like engines and motorcycles and, you know, I got a hot rod. I got, you know, all this stuff. But the thing I like the most is airplanes. And if you want to learn about forces, okay, and, you know, everything, almost everything I talk about is about force and, and how to make it and, you know, how to add force to another force and that kind of thing. If you, if you want to learn something about physics, uh, airplanes, and the, I'm going to tell you right now, the, the first thing I learned that, that I thought was, and we talked about this before, I'm going to use this little card here. An airplane, and I think I talked I talked about this before, but let's just say this is a an airplane, okay? Imagine the wings there. An airplane can move in one direction while pointing in another, okay? And in 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 um, engineering, that's called the translation. All points in the in the object move at, in the same direction, the same speed. So an airplane is it turns, okay, its control surfaces turn, it's it's being pushed by the jet or pulled by the propeller, but it can fly. Matter of fact, let's say there's this airplane here and he want this guy's chasing him and he want I just watched Top Gun the other night. What a miserable movie. But the, the was, second was, one. The second one, right? The second one, yeah. It was, it awful. was awful, coach. Yeah, was what awful. a terrible movie. The only thing that was cool was the, was the flight scenes, but if you want to shoot this guy and you get right behind him, you shoot him, and then he blows up and, and all the junk falls into your airplane. So you kind of trail him from the side, and as you're going along, you turn you turn your rudder and point your guns at him, and he, that's called translation. Well, I'm thinking about this, and I'm saying, look, I can be looking at this linebacker, okay, and if I can figure out a way to put force on this defensive lineman who's leaning on me, I can be pointing in one direction and making force in another. 
Because if I turn like this, I lose the linebacker. So that was the first kind of scientific -y thing that we talked about, and that was called trans I, I called it translation. It really isn't. But it, it was a way for me to think about it. And that's pretty much been my thing um, since that minute. Uh, and we I think we started doing it, talking like that in 95 maybe. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But if you want to learn about force, play with airplanes, model airplanes. I'm just telling you. I got, I got model airplanes that will do 150 miles an hour. But anyway – that's enough of that. The, the other thing is, like I said, I'm not a guru, but we had some questions here, and I'm going to have to look at, at my phone as I read them. Uh, somebody wanted to talk about the center on power, okay? And uh, we call that a pulling guard hole play. So let's talk about the, the left guard pulling right, either counter or power, okay? And talk about the center. Now, when, when we say – that the, that the uh, if we were running zone, the guard, the left guard, if we were running zone left, he'd have the B gap. Well, now that he's leaving, we tell the center, you have the B gap, not the A gap. You have the B gap. OK. And if there ain't nobody in the B gap and anybody crosses your face, of course, you, you wouldn't go past them. You would take them. But if you don't have the B gap, uh, you know, if you don't have green light in the B gap, you're looking at the overhang player outside the defensive end or the defensive end, okay? So anybody that attacks that B-gap, that's who you have. So what you have to do is you have to – what we call a gator step. You have to step deep enough to protect the B-gap. Even if there's nobody in it, you have to step deep enough to protect it, okay? And then we have odd and even calls. Uh, it's pretty simple. If the center is going to work with the play side guard on a double team, he'll say odd. If he's blocking back on, a say, a nose guard, he'll say even so the play side people know they can double team the three technique. And it's just odd and even. But what we say is if, um, if there ain't nobody in the B gap, that's red light. Don't hurry. And, of course, the tackle, we use we use the skip step. Let me see if I can get this thing drawn up for you. Okay. We use the, the tackle on the backside, uses a skip step, and he tries to funnel anybody in the B gap towards the center. Okay. So what he's doing is he's skipping to close this area down. But he can't stop anybody from attacking the center. He just can't do it. Okay. And here's the center right here. The center, here's the guard pulling out of there. That center's got to step deep enough, deep enough with that backside foot to, to take care of anything. Now, is he turning? Yeah, he's turning. Okay. But remember, we can rewind and use the shoulder chip. Okay. So what we're saying to the center is, look, anybody that, that's there, you got to go. And we call that a sweep if there's a nose. Okay. So let's say there's a nose. Can you see that? Can you guys see that all right? The, yes, the sir. Okay. If he's leaving the nose to go back to a three technique, he says sweep. And that tells that that guard to, that he's going to get the nose by himself. And we tell the, we're telling this center that he's going to step deep enough first for the B gap. Okay. Then he's going to come and straddle that man. Okay. And he, Really, all he's doing is he, he's blocking down to the outside. It's as simple as that. This guy is stepping deep enough for the far A gap, and then he's going to wind up, if, if nothing, if this guy rocks or whatever, he's going to feed him to the tackle. But he's going to he's going to straddle him after he's sure that he's protected that A gap. But anyway, the center, if he's leaving the nose, he says sweep. If there is no nose, it's just odd and even, okay? So here, even though there's a guy on the guard and no nose, he's stepping deep enough for the B gap, okay? It's, this is important. And one step, he'll know what's going on. But if he steps at that nose and the nose rocks and the, and, and the linebacker runs through, you got a problem, okay? So it's easier for us to rewind to that man that we know about than, than a runner or run-through guy, a guy playing underneath. 
So it's it's pretty important that he steps deep enough. Now, go, getting back to an odd front, and I'm I'm going to put this tight front thing that that you uh, that you talked about, and I won't talk about the front side. We'll talk about that later. But just talking about this back side. Here's the defensive end. Here's the nose. Okay. He sees red light here, the center. So he knows he doesn't have to hurry. He knows that that tackle is going to feed this guy or funnel him. He, the tackle's not going to let him do that. He might do that, but he's not going to do that. He's, as long as he steps deep enough to get to that B-gap area, he's okay. But he's not going to hurry. He's not going to just smoke out of there. He's not going to say it's sweep unless he thinks this man – is a B gap defender all the way, like he's aligned in the B gap. He's not on the tackle at all. Then, it, and as, and guys will say to me, "Well, how does he make that decision?" I said, "Here's what I say to to the kid: I'm over on the sideline. You're on the field. You call it the way you see it. Okay. If you make a mistake, make everybody make the same mistake. Don't be sitting there. Don't 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 hiccup. Don't get deer fever." You make the call. I'm telling you that you're in charge. You're the captain of the ship. You make the call. So if you see that guy as a three technique, he's a three technique. If you see that guy as a, as a four eye and an odd spacing, you make an odd call. And once again, once you step deep enough, if you're not in a hurry, you can rewind and shoulder chip that nose and set him up. You've called odd, so he knows he's going to skip into that, put his head in front, and you're looking now to bring this thing this way. Now, if the linebacker steps up, great, you got him, okay? But you're trying to bring it this way, okay? And you you got your eyes on that end all the way, okay? You got your eyes on. So you're probably going to wind up getting off if that end follows the guard. And, and if these guys know what they're doing, they're, looking at, they're not looking at the tackle. They're looking at the guard, okay? And if they see that guard pull, they're going to get right in his pocket as, as quick as they can. That we learned that way back when at Kansas State, uh, at a clinic at Kansas State, they would take these guys and not line them up too tight. They'd line them up kind of close to head up. They called it shoes, but they'd key the guard. So they could spriff the tackle and key the guard. It's pretty good stuff. So to me, as long as you're bringing that double team, and I, I drew it this way, but it's really this way. It's, it's towards the end in the overhang, and you're washing that thing out. There's going to be a big old hole in there, okay? The play side tackle is assigned to the backside backer. But if the backside backer runs through, the play, the play side tackle is going to go scrape paint, and he'll get the overhang or the looper or whatever's coming over the top. But he's trying to scrape paint off that off that guard, okay? I hope, I, I hope you're following me. Any questions so far? Is that okay? No, no questions yet, Coach. Okay. So, once again, if you have to call sweep, now he looks at this end and he says, ah, I got to sweep this thing. I got to sweep. So, go ahead and sweep it. Okay. Step deep and sweep it. Remember that this guard is looking for that B gap run through. So, even though he's sweeping, even though he's decided he's going to the end right away and he's not going to double team, this guard is looking for that backer run through. Okay. He's looking for that backer run through. Now, if that happens, more than likely, the nose is going to rock. The tackle is going to blow him up. If the backer runs through, just pin him right there. We'll, we'll, we'll do what we can do. You know, use your – add force to him, twist him out of the way, do whatever you got to do. But if that doesn't happen, it's all good. The guard's easy. It's an easy pickup. We, we're telling him to put his head in front anyway. The tailback is running right there. Okay, so if this guy rocks out, believe it or not, we'll try to feed him – to the tackle. We're not going to let him go. Okay, we're going to feed him. But, again, it's just odd and even, odd and even. What we know is this. If that if that guard commits to that nose right away and that center commits to that end right away, that guy will run through and hit you in the backfield. And I got, pl I got plenty of – I don't have any film, but I got plenty of – because we don't let that happen. But I got plenty of experience early on before we really started getting into this stuff. Okay, if this man's a three technique 
it, nothing really changes. He's going to make the sweep call. He's still looking here. This guard is still looking here. He's probably going to wind up blocking the nose. That's just the way it is. But he's looking for that run through. If he sees that thing coming, he's going to try and feed the nose. Okay. Uh, we call it stuffing. He's going to try and stuff the nose into that tackle who's coming, trying to come through. Okay. And even if the even if you have the tackle double teaming with the end, when he gets off, he's doing pretty much the same thing the center was doing. He's looking to his spot. So it's going flat. It's not up the field. We, we ran power in 1992 against uh, against uh, Holy Cross and knocked them back 100 feet, and that backside backer got us every time, okay? So we try and move, make the double teams go this way, okay, shutting people off. We know that if we can get that double team or that nose over here, that linebacker can't run through. He's got to go over the top. Or he's got to go tight enough to where the tackle will get him. Okay. And, you know, we still got a wrapper here. So whether it's whether it's a, a fullback or a guard, somebody's wrapping up tight. And if that guy gets in the way, he takes him. We don't want to let any free runner a shot at the tailback in the backfield. We just don't want that to happen. Is this is this okay? I'm, I'm yeah. Kind of, okay. So let me go back to my notes here. Okay. I think that pretty much – oh, when you are blocking down, okay, what you want to do, as I go as I go to step that way, okay, I want a long arm. We call it a long arm and a strong arm, okay? And I'm going to stand up now. So I'm, I'm stepping like that, and I'm we call this a stop sign, actually. It's a long arm, and we're just trying to get that thing out there so that we can touch that guy if we have to. If we come back and chip – Okay, we're already in the strong arm area. Okay, we've got that thumb roll going or whatever we, whatever we do, shoulder chip, dip the shoulder and, and unwind. But then when we block back, we want to straddle that man and use the strong arm to trap him. Okay, and if we can trap him with that strong arm, it's just a down ball. It's, like, it's just like a pin and pull or any other down ball. Uh, doesn't really... We don't, we don't take it too too much further than that. The big deal is to get that nose off the midline somehow. Get his get his butt off the midline, okay, and get to the backside backer. We figure if we can – I don't I don't like double teaming down with tight ends because uh, you got to add the bounce play and you know it's a whole nother. I rather do I rather go to open edge with a sniffer. Okay, kicking out, kicking out the defensive end, or and and getting the uh, we'll talk about this later, but uh, getting the outside backer occupied up through formation or whatever, some kind of threat, or pull, reading the outside backer, pulling the ball and letting the quarterback keep it. But you know, classic power. If you don't, if you don't get these two guys collapsed. Okay, and what's good about four eye, okay, is it's pretty easy to collapse that guy. If you don't get these two guys, the nose and the defensive end collapsed, okay, the tailback, you know, it's kind of ugly for him. But if this guy rocks out or he rocks out or anybody rocks out, that's a nice, nice crease. If you don't get them collapsed enough, you got to start thinking about bouncing. We're never going to let them bounce in the backfield. We're always going to let them press and slide, press and slide, never change direction. And the big thing we said okay, to the tailback was you mesh the wrapper. Okay. So if, if we're running power and that guy's a wrapper, the tailback got to stay on his inside shoulder as long as possible. If he crosses to the outside, he's on his own. And the wrapper, we say, look, you're gonna you're gonna skip around one two three and up, and if there ain't a hole, try to make one. But if you can slide a little bit, if you're not sure and you can slide a little bit, go ahead and do it. Just just don't be indecisive, and the and the tailback will follow you. Okay, but the mesh between the tailback and if it's if it's a sniffer, same thing. I'm gonna wrap as tight as you can, one two three and up as tight as you can. 
and give that give that tailback something to look at. Okay. And really, when you think about it, the rapper, he's just a fullback on ISO. If you think about it, these guys yep. are walking exactly. down. Exactly. He's the he, that's what he is. He wants to, that rapper wants to block with his headgear on the inside of that linebacker. And you want to split that thing right there. That's what you want to do. <laughs> you got to beat his butt. You got to beat him to death. Make him make him tired. And the problem with power, you know, you got to run and run and run and run and run. Okay. But if you can knock that guy around, if, you, if he's the focal point of what you're doing, you got a chance. Okay. And, you know, you got a master tight end. The way I like to do it is would be block that out, read the overhang, okay, make him the, make him the fullback or trap with the guard and make him the rapper, you know, counterplay. But let let the quarterback or or you know throwing game handle this this overhang player. And the problem is when you add a tight end, he's probably now when we played against Dave Miranda at Wisconsin, that guy was out here somewhere. So we probably could have got away with it pretty good. He was way out. Okay, and that has something to do with their coverage. You know, if they're not if they're not post safety, they gotta they gotta have a, a some kind of box here. Okay. And you know, we should have ran some power there, but to me it was always it was always if they're in anything else, if they're in post safety with an overhang, you know, how are we gonna get out of it? We're we gonna read it, what are we gonna do? We're we gonna check it, we might check it all day. Why run it? You know, so we we just I was the guy at Penn State that would always say, no, I don't run the power, don't run it, don't run it. Even though I learned it uh, at the University of Maine, they taught it to me. It was Those guys really, they got off the bus running it. But anyway, so that's that's blocking back. Is there any questions on that? No, Coach. Do, do, you, do you, on your tight end, if you got a seven technique, do you like the tight end to block down on power or you like him to arc? Well, you know that's that's an age old problem. Okay, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, so, if I guess if you got it, because the, and then it widens it out. If you have a seven technique and you block, you know, you well, block down. Again, it's you're saying a seven technique. I'm saying a C gap defender. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if he's on the tackle or he's on the tight end, somebody's got to be in charge of that. Okay, he's the captain of the ship. All right. But if you arc him out and double team the three, everything's all good. When they have that guy on the end, usually they're going to have this guy tighten down a little bit. You know, so you get the double team. The problem, the problem is who handles what's left. Okay, if if you can get enough punch on this guy, go for it. But if he wrong arms the thing and makes it spit, it spits to an unblocked defender. That was always my bugaboo with it. Okay, we had we had uh, you know umpteen thousand uh, discussions about that. You know they give you a nice picture, everything's cool. Okay, nice three technique, nice seven technique. Outside backer, you do that double two, do whatever you want. If you have a really good defensive end, a tight end that, that can block that guy man but I'm not much for man blocking you know I'm not I, I you know I don't want to do it especially with this guy you know I mean he might be you, you know he might be the best blocker on the field but I I got a on one of my videos I got a uh Gronkowski getting driven in the backfield and thrown at the tailback so that it happens to all of them man, man blocking that's what happens you know, you're, it's a tough deal. So I'd prefer that. I'd prefer the arc. Or, you know, if you know you got an open edge, split them out and just clean that thing up, you know. Um, again, when I coach defense, we'd look at this guy. <laughs> the defensive end, we'd look, we'd be eyes on him. I mean, feet on him and eyes on him. So as soon as you hit it, man, that was that was it right there. But anyway, go ahead. Anything else? Uh, I don't know if that's worth it, Brian. Why, why do you say? Why, why do you say that the center is responsible for the B gap? Is that because if, like, 
if there's like a TNT or a reduction and well, the guard's pulling, he's got to go all the way back to the B? Think about this now. If this was, like I said, if this was zone, he'd have the A, he'd have the B, he'd have the C, right? Okay. Well, he's gone. So if you say to this guy, oh, you stay with the A, and something, anything, safety, whoever, let's say this nose guard is, is, is right shaded there and here comes the backer. Now you're telling that tackle, stop that backer. I've talked about that like a million times. And if that nose does that and that backer does that, that tackle can't get him. He can't get him. Okay. So if I say to that that center, you're going here. Okay. You're looking, at least looking here, and you're stepping deep enough here, you're probably going to wind up blocking the nose if they're playing straight defense. Okay. But if they're doing anything but straight defense, you know, if they're doing an inside bark or something like that, you're getting Tia Feld. You know, we, you, you can tell that guy to take the B. You can tell that tackle to take the B. But how's he going to do it if, if, it's, if it's a four-eye? He's got to cut it off. It's, it's the same thing. How many times you get caught from behind? You know, so that's why we said, okay, we're, we're going to do – look, we're going to do it. If, if it's a three technique, we're going to do it. Okay, we're gonna we're sweeping it, so let's sweep this too if we have to. You know, why why get the TFL? You know, and that was that was the the, the argument for it. And you know, I ain't saying that you gotta do it. I'm saying that's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. You know? And uh, that's that's all I got for you on that one. What was our next question there, Coach? Well, let me let me see if there's anything else on that one. Has anybody um, got any questions? Put it in the chat. Wyatt Bode said, excellent, Coach. Excellent. excellent. Wyatt, when are you going to be welding that bridge? All right. We need a metal he, bridge put down he, there in North Carolina. I, I, I think it's more like fancy stuff, okay? Oh, it's he he's had, a he fabricator. Yeah, he's, he's, it's like high-tech stuff. Well, let me just show you this here just for the hell of it, okay? Yeah, show it to me. All right, here you go, right here. You see that blitz? Move it a little bit closer, Coach. Okay, you see that? That's blitz? better, Coach. Okay. Yes. So you're running power over here, okay? That center locks up with that nose guard and winds up rotating and, and staying with that nose guard. This guy hits you right in the backfield, Okay. If he feeds that nose guard to the guard who's double teaming, you know, and if they're doing that, they're probably doing some kind of thing like that. Okay. And even if he's double teaming the three technique, uh oh, that's telling me I got to take my medicine. For a okay. He's got his eyes on that gap. He's going to see that thing happening. He's going to see this guy wiggling over here a little bit. He's going to, somebody's going to tell him the safety's coming down. If we put the safety right in the middle, like like most of these people do when they're running this, uh, you know, inside bark stuff, we're 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 yelling it out. We're yelling it out. He's a thief. It's a thief. It's a thief. What's he doing in there? Something's up. It's a thief. Something's wrong. Okay. And if they do that and they get stopped, okay. And, and the thing creases, everybody's pissed on the other sideline. You know? But if this guy doesn't look for the nose and he doesn't look for the run through, you're TFL. So. Wyatt said he's electrical. He's not a welder, coach. Okay. Well, there you go. He told me that, but I forgot it. But I didn't think it was, I said he was a fabricator. A fabricator. I don't yeah. even know what a fabricator is. He makes stuff. Well, you're a NASCAR guy, right? No, coach. I'm I'm a nothing guy. You're not a NASCAR guy. I'm the low man on the totem pole. You're the only guy in Virginia that's not a NASCAR guy. I'm, coach, I've never even seen a NASCAR. I remember when Dale Earnhardt died. My okay. dad said that's bad. He hit that wall head on, coach. Yeah, I, I'm not a NASCAR guy, but I know what a fabricator does. He builds those cars. <laughs> if, they want, if they want to move the the steering a little bit, the fabricator comes in and gets his grinder and he cuts a few tabs and moves them and welds them up. And there we go. So, but I don't know anything else with that. I, I'm good on that. Has anybody got any questions on power and blocking back? 
or blocking down. I guess we're good, Coach. We can go on to the next question. All right. Well, who's the guy that, that put all these questions up? Bryce Fritz. Okay. Is he, is he, you got another question? He's, he must not be watching, Coach. I don't, I don't know where Bryce is. Right. He sent well, me him. Well, okay. So the next thing was where was question about hand placement and pass protection. Okay. And, and that has been a lengthy that. discussion on Twitter. The Coach oh, McNally – and people have been trying to post stuff saying that offensive tackles shouldn't punch. So this well, hand I, placement's very – it's it's a controversial topic right now. Well, I, I don't know um, – you know, I don't know if it, if it depends so much on shouldn't or couldn't or should as it does on the rusher. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write what I, what I say to kids – just a generic hand placement for me. I don't tell them nothing other than I want you to get some sort of a, a, a leverage on this guy, and I want a long arm and a strong arm, and I want the strong arm in the armpit if you can get it and the long arm on the man's pec. Okay. Now, that's that's kind of generic, but we'll go from there. Um, so we're talking pec and armpit. Okay. Now, if he's inside, I want the same thing. I want the far peck and the near armpit. Okay. Now, it really depends. I got the, I got it written just exactly like this. It depends on the type of rush, the alignment, the whole bit. But basically, most pass protection is man to man. Even even when we say it's oh it's slide it's zone, unless it's full gap, it's man to man. Okay. So what we want to do is keep an open leg to the rusher. So if I got a man, my man is to my right, I want my right leg back mm -hmm. open. Okay, if he's to my left, I want my left leg back. Even if it's inside, I want it to the leverage of the man that, that I am going to block. Okay. And I want to have an angle or create one. So if I have to block a guy that's dead nuts in front of me, yellow light, I want to take a little short inside set with my left foot if, if I'm a right side guy. And we call this a short set. It's literally a short set. It's not up. It's not back. It's, it's, it's lateral. And then I'm going to open my leg to, the, to that man so that I have an angle on him so I can use a long arm and a strong arm. Okay. And Jim McNally coaches, coaches on that short set 100 years ago. I don't know what, you know, I've been using it ever since, but. We're trying to create that leverage angle so that we're blocking half of that guy. So it's going to be hard for him to beat us one way, and we're going to try and get him to go the other way. We're going to try and get him to go to the long arm, okay? Obviously, if a guy's on our outside shoulder and he's ours or outside of us and he's ours, the quarterback's inside, we want to maintain leverage if we can, and that's what that strong arm is for, okay? Now – we don't kick slide, we stomp. We don't shot put kick or any of that stuff. We sh stopped doing that a long time ago. I could never coach it anyway. We move our feet, okay? Lots of little steps. We condense ourselves. The, the, the tighter and more compact we can be with our body and our legs bent a little bit, the quicker we're going to be able to accelerate, okay? We don't want momentum. Like you, you sent me that Reggie White thing, and I was laughing. I was like, "Who? Who am I going to tell anybody to block Reggie White and his hump move?" Okay, but the hump move works because the 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 blocker is got a momentum already, and he's just adding to the force. He's adding a force to the force, and he's it's basically a club. You know, he used to head slap you, but it would just then you hit him. He's actually rooting his feet and throwing the man and coming under him. And I noticed he pretty much only used that when he was aligned on the left side, okay, versus, say, a right tackle or somebody on the right side of the offense. But, I, again, I didn't I didn't watch all the clips, so I don't know. His highlight tape, they have him all over the place. He's, he's nose guard. He's a three technique. He's has an end. He's at, he's at the other side, whatever. But he had that knack. Plus, if you watch the guy – 
he's fast. I mean, he's Julius Preppers. He's he's all of that, probably bigger. You know, oh, yeah. He's, he's like lightning, and he's coming out of he's coming out of the blocks, and he's condensed. He's not up in the air. He's not like one of these six foot seven dudes. He's he's down there. So he's he's got the chance to accelerate, and he does. And all he does is just get you rolling, and he clubs you. So how do you count it? I don't know. You block it, do some karate stuff. I don't know what, but I know one thing. I'd be condensed. I'd be, and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have momentum. I'd be in control of my movement. I'd be able to move, okay, uh, quickly with little steps. Now I'm going to say a couple of things that are kind of interesting. Okay, the defender wants you to move fast. He wants you to move fast, so he can sit faint one way and go the other. He's just, he's just like running around on you and you're just like a db okay if you're out of control if you don't have the ability to accelerate change direction and speed you can't stay with them okay and you know I, I i have this further down the line but you know this um being proactive stuff is good until somebody twists <laughs> you know so you got you know game plan that uh, and i've seen it work and i've seen plenty of film and i'm all for it and god bless you but I know one thing. If I go jump somebody and somebody I can't see hits me in the side of the head, and then that guy loops, I got problems, you know. So we we just sort of teach the cut first and then work from there. You game plan like, um, you know, they take Boza and they put them over here, and then they take everybody else and put them over there because they're trying to draw the center that way. Well, first thing I'd do is I'd be chipping Boza. I'd be killing him. We had a kid at Elon. We couldn't run practice. And he was a six foot seven, just he was like lightning. And he would disrupt practice. He knew our snap count the whole bit, you know. So I, I wind and wind and wind, and I got him to finally chip. The first time we chipped that kid, the, the, the back put him on the ground. He almost quit. We chipped him like all week. He, he didn't want to rush anymore. He used to take the practice over. But if he saw that back on his side, uh oh. And we didn't do this with the receivers or the tight ends, but you should. We had a guy. Um, we had a guy at, at Ball State, and uh, his name was Willie Sneed. And uh, Sean Payton told me that they would chip with him. He was just a receiver, but he was two hundred pounds, rock hard. He come motion in. He chipped that defensive end. So that's that. That's not part of the talk, really. But what I'm saying to you is, I I don't want to get twisted. Um, so how do we slow up a guy like that? We chip him, okay? Chip him with the receiver. As a matter of fact, Sean Payton, I remember an interview he gave one time on TV. He said he will never – they just lost a playoff game. He said he'll never go into a game without a chip package again. I don't know if he, if he did or not, but that's what he said, okay? So uh, he's a big dude too, by the way, Sean Payton. I, I had lunch with him one time. But – um Way back when we can we we used to tell the kids, okay, if you're setting to the right, tilt your head to the left, and it was a head tilt. And McNally said it at one of his clinics, and he was just saying saying it all, you know, like off the cuff, like he had one guy would tilt his shoulders and all this other stuff. And I I wrote it down. And I went back to wherever I was and started coaching it. And what I noticed is if you head tilt it kind of keeps you from wanting the headbutt and it also takes weight off the open leg. Okay. Keeps it on the up leg and off the open leg. So consider that I stopped doing it. I was like the big head tilt guru, but, but I would consider that, uh, you know, uh, I think it, I think it made a difference. I think condensing is better than tilting the head. We were kind of long leg when I was doing that. I think condensing and you know, it's hard to do all this stuff. Okay. The other thing. Okay. Uh, if you, if you go on in on the internet, you'll see uh, on YouTube, you know, you have coach Callahan's 2019 uh, presentation from the cool clinic. I think it was 2019. I didn't go, but I heard all about it, and I, I just watched a few, uh, a few minutes of it uh, about two weeks ago, and I didn't even have the sound on, but I was just watching them. And what I noticed was his, his players' hands, and feet were quicker than anything that that 
I've seen. Okay. And I started thinking about it. And I said, well, that's the silliest thing. What a dope I am. Okay. If, if you're a receiver and you're going to run up and make a break, I've heard receiver coaches say, okay, play the drum. Because when you have fast hands, you have fast feet. Okay. So if you want to take little steps and you're doing this with, you're doing like what I do with your hands. Okay. If I was coaching now, I'd be doing this. I'd be, I'd be doing that because I know it would speed my feet up. Now, I'm sure they got other reasons for doing it. I didn't talk to Coach Callahan. I didn't talk to anybody about it. But if if I was doing it now, I'd be doing that. I'd be okay. And I think I think that that's also tough for, for people to chop. So if I got a jet rusher, I'm going for his peck, but I don't have to touch it. I'm gonna hold it up. A jet rusher is running straight up the field. If I'm a tackle, I want him to run straight up the field. If I'm a guard, I don't. I want to get in front of him. Or a center, I want to get in front of him. But if I'm a tackle, I want to run him up the field. But if I was doing it today, I'd be doing that because it speeds up your feet. And, you know, I'm looking at this, I'm like, yeah, hey, he went so wide, you know, he's doing it. Yeah. But then I started looking at their feet, and their feet were smoking, okay? Little steps, okay? And to me, a lot of little steps means that you're, you're, you know, you're in first gear. You you hit the pedal to the metal. That tires are spinning. You want those tires spinning because you want to be under control. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So I like that, and you know, that's what I liken it to. Now the guards and the centers, like like we said, they set flatter. Okay, they want to set flatter and wider. So. A jet rush to me is a guy that's not on me at all, but I got to get him. And he, in other words, I ain't in front of him. I want to set and funnel him out. Okay, I want to send him out. A jet rush for a tackle, if I go out to him, and, you know, people say they, they're going to uh, jump set him or up kick him and all that stuff. And Jim loves that stuff. And so I'm not, I'm not criticizing it. It works. I just, you know, to me, it's like if I up kick this guy and the three technique picks me and he loops around, everybody's looking at me. And they're, they're saying, Coach, you told me to do that. I said, I'm like, well, I, yeah, I don't know. So we we say to the tackles, you sit deeper, okay, initially. And the first time I ever heard that, it was uh, Dante Scarnecchia. He came to visit us at Penn State. And he said we set – he said it basically only against three down, five down sets uh, – Tight sets. He said that the guards set wider and the tackles set deeper. And what they're trying to do is big island the thing, you know, put the nose by himself and and expand. They didn't want to duel out and pick up outside backers. And Lawrence Taylor coming off the edge and some guard trying to get over and get him, pick him up. So, you know, I like that. And we, we did that against all fronts. Okay. And when we do that, the tackle sitting deeper, he can widen after he's sure that that's what he's getting. But he never wants to sit deeper than, and I say two steps, but it's four steps. He never wants to go one. He never wants one, two, one, two. That's it. Then he wants to make a decision. What am I going to do? Is the guy jetting? Is he? Is he? Going to cra- is he crossing my face? Is he going to bull rush me? Is it a twist? Does he put his hands up? And, oh, it's a sack dance. I know I'm getting a twist. I get depth right away. But we don't want to be backpedaling. Okay. We don't want to get hit backpedaling because, you know, the hump move. <laughs> I mean, they, they just bull rush. They, be- they bury their head and you're, you're standing up backpedaling. How are you going to stop it? You can't do it. We want to be condensed. We want our hands in front of us, protecting ourselves. Now I want to be like this with my hands so that my feet are moving. And I want to I want to challenge him. Okay. I want to challenge him. Now the, the, that now this is going going back to the tackle. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you sent me this or somebody sent me this. They had a guy, the guy Duke somebody. And yeah, Duke Mannyweather. Okay, so he had that tackle, and that tackle stance was pretty wide. Okay, I want you to think of what DB you've seen backpedal that has stance wide. Tell me, 
Tell me if you see one. <laughs> okay. So if you're gonna if you're gonna sit vertically with a tackle, even if you're only setting a couple steps, you don't want to have wide feet because as soon as you have a wide feet, you're gonna turn. Got turned. That guy turned, right? He turned. Now he maybe he was trying to turn because he was trying to get his inside hand. In. But to me, if you turn right away, you get picked. Okay. You 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 turn you turn to that outside rusher. And you get hit in the side of the head by that three technique. The guard can protect you, but only so much. Okay. And so you want to narrow that stance up. And, you know, you've seen these guys, they uh, they get their stance real tight and all that stuff. But, you know, you kind of give it away. But if I, you know, if I was doing it now, I, I would coach the tackles to have a narrow stance all the time. Okay. Just all the time. And I, I the guards in the center's head, do what you want, you know. You want to be narrow, be narrow. You want to be wider, be wider. I'm not worried about you. But the tackles, because they're the guys with the jet rush problem more than anybody else. So to me, also, don't put your strong arm in too fast. Now, you got a guy coming at you. Don't worry about it. Just do what you got to do. You know, get both double unders. You know, do, do what you got to do. Lift the guy up. You know, even if you're locked out, lift, try and get him, get him up. Tear them, throw them one way or the other. But if you're if you got a jet rusher and you number one, you, you're not reaching to strike him. If his if his peck doesn't turn, you just put that hand out there and wait till it does. But don't put your inside hand in right away because as soon as you do, you're turned. And if you do it too soon, you're going to turn too soon. He's going to come right over your outside shoulder. <clears throat> you got to have a feel for it. How deep the quarterback is. I, I don't care for seven step drop because it's now it's it's three or four different drop areas for the for the tackle to figure out. I like quick quick game, you know, as a check and then five step. If I had my drillers, every every good coach I've been around uh, said, Yeah, we're five step. We're not gonna mess around with seven step. And they look at me and say, You probably couldn't protect it anyway. So, you know. <laughs> But if you put that hand in too, that inside hand in too fast, you turn. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay. Now, there's going to be a point, okay, where you know it's time to turn. Okay. Now, you, you don't want to put your outside hand in. You don't want to do that. You want to put your inside hand. And now we're talking about shot putting. Okay. And I wish I could show you my feet, but. I can't really show you my feet, but think about this. I, I got an open leg to the right. And if I turn, I'm shut off. My, my open leg has shut me off. So I want to pivot like a basketball player. I want to throw that leg backwards and pivot. And maybe I'm going to run after that guy, you know, get some width on him. But I don't want my right leg to shut off my left leg. And I don't want to put that other hand in. I want to just shot put this guy. And then I want to keep that leg. Now it's my, it's this leg. It's my left leg that's open. I want to keep that left leg. I don't want to sprint after him because I sprint after him. He puts the brakes on, rolls under me, or, you know, you're seven yards up the field and he just clubs you by and comes back to the quarterback. So I want to try and keep that open leg. We always want to keep an open leg uh, when we're in close proximity. So all I've done is open leg right, basketball pivot, shot put, open leg left. And then chase him, okay? And uh, when I say chase him, I mean go go with him. Now, you don't have to chase him forever, but when he puts the brakes on, you better be waiting for him. And if you're sprinting, you're going to run past him. It's just the way it is, okay? So so the chase is is under – everything we do is, is under control. As We're doing it as quick as we can, but not as fast, okay? The game isn't fast. It's quick. All right. Okay. So after that, you know, we're let's let me go through the things that we talk about. We got a jet rusher, which we've just added infinitum. We got a bull rusher and we got a cross rusher. Okay. And that could be you could have a jet rusher inside, although I, I would say that we wouldn't want a game plan that, you know. But I'm sure there's some protections where you would. But uh you got you can definitely have a um uh, a bull rush from the inside. You know, you got the four eye. I, we don't like. I don't like. I don't like tackles collapsing t 
to, to block four eyes. I'd rather give it to the guard if possible. Okay. Depends on the count, you know, three down, four down, five down. If it's, if, if it's three down, we're going to call it five down, or we're going to make some kind of call Island call and let the center be by himself and the guards turn out and the tackles drop deep. So, um, when we when we have a jet rush, we've gone over that. When we have a bull rush, okay, as that as that jet rusher collapses on us, we're looking for his peck and we're trying to get his armpit. Okay, and if we can stop him, maybe we put both we gr we grab him underneath that pad and we try to lift him up. Hop, hop, hop. I I don't I kind of like the mud walk where you're just you're you're taking steps. <laughs> the hop works. I, I've seen it work. What, what I don't like about it is this. If you don't have great a great hand placement and you, you give up contact with the ground, you might just hop yourself right out of there. Okay. And, you know, uh, the one thing I, I would say about, about bull rushes is you can chop them, but you got to use, you got to, you got to slow him down either by hopping because you're going to take your hands off to chop them, okay? And even if you take one hand off to chop them, you, you better be rooted in the ground, okay? So whether you hop or mud walk, you're using this as your hand just for a minute or a second. That, that's your hand, and you better be slowing that guy down. You better be sandbagging him, and then you chop. He's leaning on you. He falls on the ground, okay? I get that. Um you know, maybe it was just the level I've coached at, but we haven't done a lot of that. Uh, more inside than outside, okay? Um, you know, inside guys would do it more often, the guards, centers. And it seemed like the better the kid was, the more the more chance he had to do it. Most of those guys are just trying to hang on, you know? But uh, anyways, um the tackles throw backwards, like we said, shot put throw. We literally call it a shot put throw. The centers and guards throw out. Okay, so if they get – they're going to sit out and they want to throw out. They want to throw that way so that the tackle isn't he, – he, he's not blinded. He wants to be able to feel that three technique. Okay, he wants to – even if he perifs the three technique – you can throw them out. You protect that tackle a lot better than, you know, you're setting with, with your inside hand. You're looking at the end. You're trying, well, let's throw that guy out. We're widening, we're widening that guard already. Let's, if we can throw him, let's throw him out. Okay. And if we do throw him out, get depth, get depth because you threw him out, let him come back to you. You got what he wants, the quarterback. Okay. And if there is a late twist or anything like that, or whatever, you're in great shape. The other thing is this. If, if I'm a tackle and I'm setting, okay, and there's a man on me and a man outside of me, and I'm setting that man outside of me, I never, ever want to vacate this man. Because as soon as I vacate him, he'll pick me. No one can protect me. And the outside backer, I'm losing you, coach. You sleeping? No. Nah. I got uh -huh. you. <laughs> Sleep. Okay. Once once that guy establishes his rush, you can vacate the end. But until that that outside guy establishes his rush, you can't vacate the end. And you better have an open leg to the to the, your man and protect yourself with your hands. Just just keep him from from grabbing you. I got you, coach. I got you. Bye. All right. Well, <laughs> well I'm 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 droning on and on and on. But I, I uh, <laughs> tell me, you want to give me the hook anytime you want. Okay. And we okay. still got my buddy from Mission Viejo, Coach. Uh -huh. um, the offensive line coach from Mission Viejo, he sent a bunch of questions. But I don't think we've gotten through Bryce Fritz's yet, have we? We just we're on number two, but this yeah. is a long one. This is a long <laughs> yeah. one. Talk about talk about hand placement in the back well, in the well, past game. All right, we'll we'll move on. We'll move on. I'll we'll, yeah. just say to you this: if you're not if you're not rushed, get square, square to air, get some depth. Okay, so in other words, the guy you thought was rushing, boom. And when we, when you're not rushed, if you're going to give help, don't turn. Chip, chip, don't turn, don't turn. Okay, so if I chip, if I chip to help the center, I can still 
come out and help the tackle. And as soon as I turn, I'm dead meat. Okay. Um, and I won't I won't talk about the wrench or, or how I like to drill it. Okay, the next question, unless you want to give it to your boy out in Mission Viejo. Well, what was the third question from Bryce? Because well, it was a long arm. How do you how do you defeat the long yeah, arm? Long arm, coach. That was a big that was a big deal on Twitter. Was uh Duke Mannyweather was talking about the long arm and how it's overrated that an offensive tackle has to have over 33 inch arms. But then someone else said that there's only been three guys that's made the Pro Bowl that's had shorter than 33 inch arms. Well, I I don't know what he's talking about. He, when you say the long arm, I'm I'm assuming it's it's like a defensive end, you know, yeah. like, uh, J- uh, Jadavian Clowney or somebody like that. Which he doesn't even have. He doesn't even use the one arm. Uh, I I would I would say. Um, I can't think of a guy that uses it that, but I know people use it on it in every the game. Boses, don't they? Don't the Boses use it? The who? The Boses. The Boses, yeah, they probably do. You know, they're they're they they rush so quick, it's hard to see what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> but the long arm, there's you know, the old, the the way that people talked about it was up into the elbow, not here, here behind the elbow, lift it up. Okay, we started trying to do that, and it's the same old thing. You know, you got to – you're taking your hands away. You got to get that. You got to get it. Okay, if you get it, you lift it up. If he feels it, he'll let it go, and you're right back where you started from. At least you you protected your neck and what have you. You Some of these guys are doing this stuff, and now at least the refs are throwing throwing the flag. And we started saying, well, if they're going to one arm, we'll one arm. Okay, so this arm, you you put this arm to me. I'm going to try and do that. And I'm going to try and get in your armpit, and I'm going to try and do this to you. Yeah. So in, other words, in other words, you're using. Let's say you're using your right arm. Okay, I'm going to use my left. Okay, you're using your left arm. I'm going to use my my right. You're okay? mirroring the guy. I'm mirroring the guy, and I'm I'm trying to get now. You know, one arm's longer than two. That was another thing that people discussed. There was people on Twitter saying that one arm is not longer than two, and Coach McNally showed a picture of the boxer, one of the – Logan Paul, I think, and he well, was extended. Watch this. Can I don't know if you can see this. Can you see me right there? Yes. Okay. Here I am with two arms. Yes. Okay. Can you see me? Yes. I can't even see myself. I can see it. How can you say it's not longer? How can you say it's not longer? How can you say that? Of course it's longer. Why do you think they're doing it? <laughs> they're doing they yeah, two arm two arm uh press out. Why do you think they went to one arm? Every defensive lineman line coach in the country will say that one arm is longer than two. What we started to say was one arm is stronger than two. And we started to talk about the shoulder, the seesaw, okay, the seesaw. I can push with this side of my body and pull with that side of my body or torque, add some torque, okay. And even though I'm locked out and and it's a bad lever, well, he's got a bad lever too, okay. So I can can get to his body. If I can get to his armpit, I think I'm in good shape. So that's what we, that's the way we talked about it, and we did a run and pass. Okay, I, I mean long arms really a run thing. It's not it's not a pass thing. Uh, you know they're going to hit you with it and then hit you with something else. But but um, that's the way we started talking about it. And then just recently we started saying, look, okay, duck, <laughs> duck. Don't let him hit, don't let him get you in there. You know, he's, maybe he'll get you in there, but duck and then come under him. Okay. Now I don't know if this works for pass. I wouldn't. I don't know if I have the balls to do it, but it definitely works for run. Okay. You want to hit me in the chest or in the neck with the long arm? Go for it. Go for it. And and what we'll, we'll, you know, 
well, the, the the most effective thing we that we saw uh, on the uh, on the shoulder roll was guys would just dive on the ground. <laughs> they wouldn't let you move them. Okay, so uh, that's good, I guess. What are you going to do? He wants to jump on the ground. You got your feet under you. Maybe you can keep going. I don't know. But that was the, the long arm thing. The way we we talked about it was. Not only is it longer, it's stronger. If you learn, if you know how to do this, yeah, the you know how to use your torso. Okay. How's that? Yes, sir. I wanted to see what my buddy from Mission Viejo, the O-line coach. Okay. Um, coach Stevenson. All right. He has sent me a bunch of them. Let me look here, coach. Send them okay. To you. Well, this is what I have left. Second level, run, run plates versus the tight front. So, yeah, what techniques do you use for, for open field second level blocking in both zone and gap schemes? Okay. What are your favorite run plays versus the tight front? Exactly, coach. Okay, well, second level, when you're talking second level to me, there, there's a couple of it's t- tell me the play, zone and gap. It's the same play. It's the same play. I've t- I've tried to tell people this. It's well, go right or go left. I mean I, I learned that from you. No, you didn't learn nothing from me. No. Well, Who did you learn it say, from? Who did you learn it from? I don't know. I, I don't know. We just made made sense. But I talked about this before. <laughs> it made sense. Well, because I mean, if you're zoning, if you if you're zoning to the play, you don't have to pull anybody. But when well, you're well, gapping away from where the ball's hitting, you have to bring pullers. Well, here's the deal. Okay, I got this this linebacker. Right, I got this gap, and he's in it. Okay. If I run at him I, and I close my leg, he'll give me one hit and step that way. But if I keep the leg open, if he goes backside, I rewind on him. If he goes front side, I'm open to him and I just do this with him. If he backs up or stands there, I, I don't want to hit him at all with, with anything but my hands. Okay. I, we, I say to the kids, do not put your head in a linebacker unless he puts his head into you. Okay. Don't put your head in a linebacker because he's going to hit you back up, splash you and make the tackle for two. Okay. So you get in there and this is, this is hanging him on a meat hook, but we keep an open leg to our gap. So if I'm running power over here, there's my gap, open leg to that gap. And that's where the gallop came into play. Okay. As soon as you close that leg, you lost your gap. Yes. Same with that. Yeah. Okay. So you want to, you know, you're just, and you could, you, if you watch my videos, you'll see guys running. They look like they're running, but one leg is always hanging back. It might get even, but it's always hanging back. That's the open leg. Okay. Keep that leg open. Don't put your head in unless he puts his head in you. And, you know, he puts his head through your chest. You're going to go backwards. So you got to do that. Okay, but you want to block him with your hands. Now, if he's if it's a sweep or something like that, and he and he bursts, you burst. But don't we say this? If I we're gonna junction guys, well, three steps, you know, shotgun them like you know, three steps lateral. That's it. Other than that, go hunt them up, go hunting because the back will set you up. But if you're if you're trying to if you're trying to shotgun him, you think he's going to run to the sideline, and the back puts his foot in the ground, he's going to put the brakes on him. You won't see what the back does. You won't see when he does it. Give the back a chance. Okay, three steps, no more than three. Go get him. Okay? And when when the back sees that, when he sees the aggressiveness, if he's if he's got a chance to get to you, he'll set him up. He'll, he'll fade to the outside, draw, draw him into you, and then – Make the cut. And once he makes a cut, he can get back outside. But it's gallop. That's if we're going to the linebacker second level, it's gallop. Okay. If we're going to air, it's gallop. We're not. We're never in a hurry. You know, red light. If, if we can't help anybody, we're still galloping. You know, quicker plays, we go quicker. C gap plays, we extend it. Sweeps. If you're pulling, it's one, two, three, and go. Don't keep running the sideline. Even if he's running the sideline, you ain't going to get him anyway. Run at him because the back is probably running to the sideline. He's running the sideline. 
run at them. Don't turn up early. Run at them, but but go three steps. Make sure before you run at them. So it's just like open field tackle. Okay, the back is drawing him. You're 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 the he's the back is containing him. You're going to get him. When that guy cuts back, you blow him up. And if you consider, it depends on how good they are. If you're the right guy, consider throwing. I don't know if you can do that anymore. Can you block? Can you throw and throw and, and uh, log roll a guy? And, and no, no, no. I don't even know if you can do it in college football anymore. But. Yeah, they, they don't allow. They don't, I would. I mean, it, it works. Oh, it and, works. I mean, Coach works. McNally, he used to teach. It was wicked. I mean, Anthony oh. Munoz blocking a guy on a five technique, and then all of a sudden he's rolling up into the dude's legs, leg whipping him. Well, that. Yeah. that you know, like if you look at the old, the real old C gap stuff, the backside tackles cutting the three like every down. Yeah, we, we, we do it all the time. So, yeah, this second I level, know. I don't think you can block low. Well, you yeah, know, it's, it's, yeah. I could see where it, it wouldn't be worth talking to the kid about doing it because you're going to get a flag. So forget that part of it. Mm. <laughs> but, but we, you know, if you, if you're the right kind of guy in college football, we would let you do it. If you were an athletic guy, and you, so a lot of kids will throw and they'll miss or they'll 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 get hurt. They won't be able to get back up. But yeah, I, I had a center at uh, Ball State, and he was the best player on the field. He could do anything. I said, yeah, go throw. You know, go ahead and drop him if you can. Why not? I don't think he ever did, but why not? Look well, good if you can get there. We didn't really run. We didn't major in pin and pull um, or sweeps, but when I was at UMass, we had we ran sweep, and those guys were pretty athletic. This guy, the old line guy at Liberty, he was like six foot eleven and about four hundred pounds. He could run like a deer. Who, Bill Durkin? Billy Durkin, big boy. Who, who taught? Uh, who did Jim Reed get to teach? Um, the D line coach. Cut, um, what's his name? Uh, Joe Mike, Cullen. Joe Cullen. Who who taught Joe Cullen? Jim well, Reed told me that he got some old NFL guy. He said this is the nastiest coach of all time. Well, that that you you talk. We talked about this. Yeah, when, I yeah, got to write his name down, Deke Coach Pollard. Deke who? Pollard. Deke Pollard. Deke Pollard. Is he yeah. still alive? I don't know. I don't know. Deke Pollard. So he actually taught Joe Cullen. Did, did I don't know Joe that. You, you said it to me. I know Joe Cullen. Yeah, I know I know Jim Reed and Joe Cullen very well. Deke but Pollard. Deke Pollard was the tilt man. So he was, did he coach John Randall with the Vikings? I, I don't know. All I know is this. He wherever he went, they ran, they ran a four down tilt, under front tilt. And and that was it. He, I remember I, I heard the story. I don't know if it's true. They, they were all up at Syracuse, and uh, I believe the coordinator at the time was was Jim Reed. And he said, "Well, we're going to do this. We're going to do that." And Deke Pollard turned around and said, "Look, I don't care what you guys do. We're running the tilt." <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard. Yeah, I mean. He's got to control the front, <laughs> and he's. Uh, I don't he, know, but I know. I know Richmond ran that for a long time with that that kid, uh, Mark Megna. Yeah. They, so Mark they, Megna was the tilt. I, I believe he. I believe Richmond tilt. I mean, they yeah. called him a nose. Yeah. So he was. He was nasty. Oh, yeah, he tilted the, the nose to three. Sometimes they'd square him up. You know, it was. All, I I think that came from Joe Green. Me, me and Joe Green, the tilt alignment, and then uh, that. I could be wrong on that too, but um, those Michigan State guys, uh, what the heck was his name? Hank Bullock. They were all tilt guys. I, mean, I don't know if you remember the four down with the two nose guards and they'd be tilted and they'd be twisted and all that. Nobody could figure out how to do it. So we said, well, look, if I'm going to the tilt nose, I'm not going to go to him because he's going to jam me and this guy's going to come around. No one's going to get him. I'm going to go around him. I'm going to encircle, and that's where the encircle against a tilt came. So if I encircle him and he wants to come across, his feet are really close to the line of scrimmage. If you go at him, if you go – I'm going to show you right here. 
Let me just draw it real quick. So they had this double nose look. So they had one nose here, one nose here. And sometimes they'd only have one, one tilted. And we said to that center, if you're going this way and he wants you, this guy will come free. Can you see that? Yeah. So we said, well, do this and circle. So if he comes across, now, when they're in the tilt, their feet are close to the line of scourge. One little step, they're across. So go this way. He can't go backwards. He can only go forwards. No. He or, can only go one way. Yeah. Well, he can go two ways, but but he can't go that way because he's tilted. So you wrap him up, and if he goes this way, that guy comes, you, you get him, and th this guy, you do the same thing. In circle. In circle. Okay? And it worked. You know, we work pretty good. I believe that's where, that's where we, we later on we called it Apache. Yeah. You know, so Apache was, you know, here's here's General Custer in the middle, and here's all the Apaches encircling him. Yeah. And we said, look, you just Apache that guy, because it told them it pretty much told them everything, and that's we used the shoulder roll and we used the open leg and. And it was pretty good. That's that's that's, that's good stuff. But okay, so that I don't know. That's open field. If unless he want, if he's got anything anything different. Um, now the run play, you're gonna laugh at this one. Okay, so we played Wisconsin at when we were at Penn State, and they were pretty. They were pretty good. I mean, they were really good. We beat them up there, and they ran uh, with what you guys are calling a tight front. I, didn't, I had no idea that it was called a tight front. And we were trying to run C-gap zone. And, and it, you know, they, they were helping us a little bit. Okay. We were, and we said, well, we're going to, we're going to massage their outside backer. And the thing you want to do with this thing. Okay. Is you don't want to be in two by two. You want to be in three by one. Yeah. You want to get this guy defined somehow. Okay. Uh -huh. you, you can't do much about him. Okay. But you want to get this guy either on the line yeah. or out, okay. you know, apex or wider. And that's going to start telling you something about this guy. And Aranda kind of helped us a little bit because he, I think he wanted to play zone with it. You know, the worst thing in the world is to have that guy in a four eye and this guy in a in an eight technique. Or not an eight technique, uh, uh six He's walked. Six walked is great. We want him walked. Okay. So you know are you following me? Yeah, I, I just can't see where you're drawing him up. Like one player is a four eye and then to the tight inside. Okay. Uh, let, an, let eight, an eight technique is mean off the ball. Let me and, let me, let me see. Yeah, I, I just can't remember all this mumbo jumbo football stuff. You know, I don't. Yeah. You talk to me about welding, I I can I can get it for you. Yeah. But, a seven six nine, and then an eight is like an yeah. off the ball. I used like to a, remember. Okay, so with with a slot here, can you see that now? Yeah. Okay, he's got to walk. Here, that guy. Well, you don't have to walk, but if he does walk, you got a pretty good idea what's going on. You know, and he can. This guy can go to him. He's if he's the point, he's the plus. And let's just say C gap zone. He can go to him, and if he plays it wide, and this guy tries to fit, he can go and grab that. Matter of fact, if this guy fast scrapes, he can even grab him, help out. Okay, because if he's if he's attacking the slot, and we're running it here, who gives a crap? Okay, so we made some yardage on that, but when you're when you're letting this guy let, like a two by two and both of it, you can't define these guys, you got a problem. Okay. So the three by one set is the way to go. But what I like the best, okay. And of course, you know, you run a C gap, you just got to figure out how to stuff this guy to the guard. He's got to stay square in case there's a run through. Okay. So it's, it's sort of, it's almost like an Apache, but we would say, we wouldn't we wouldn't skip this guy. We we say shuffle over and cover him. You give him a, now. I'd say shoulder roll this guy, shoulder him into him. 
as long as there was no threat here, we could kill him pretty good and get the backer. And if the backer ran under, at least we could put the brakes on and shut it off. Okay. But the play I like the best at, you know, this is not this is not a new defense. This is what and all it is is, is uh, all it is is the bare front. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> yeah. So grace. Grace is the go-to in my mind. That's what I would do. And these guys are just fast. And fast. I, I saw uh, Ian Tatum, the high school coach in North Carolina. He had that defense right there was playing against Ole Miss, and they did that same exact thing, blocked down on the four-eye, pulled the front side guard, and then they had a backside H that actually led – Sure. Yes. Yeah. You go. You you you're gonna bang your head off the goalpost. Yeah, that's exactly what Lane Kiffin did, and yeah. he, he was calling that. He, I don't know what he was calling it. Like he was calling it a G, like he was kicking out. But really, it's just a pin and pull, right? Well, no, no, it's a trap. It's a trap. It, it, it's a double team and a trap. It's not a pin and pull. You're you that tight end is gonna knock. Now I would use shoulder roll. Okay. So I'd either shoulder roll him and chip through if this guy was wider and let the tight end block him, I'd get to the backer, or I would shoulder roll and grab him and the tight end would scrape paint and get to the backer. If if that tight end can get to that backer, you don't even need the, the rap guy. So that's the play that Coach McNally ran with the Bengals with a fullback. He inserts for the play side backer, and then they pull the front side guard, right? We, we like. Did. We did this. Out of a split back. We did this out of, out of the eye at Lafayette at um, uh, when I was at Cornell. Then we get off the bus running this thing. And it's a pretty, you know, you got to drop another guy in. The problem with two backs in the backfield is you got to drop another guy in. Okay. You know, you'll, you'll get a 5-3 instead of, a, instead of this. But even if you get a 5-3, You got enough players, you know. The way to stop it was they put a tight overhang and a, and a six technique, so the tight end wasn't sure what to do. But we didn't have the shoulder roll at that time. Now I'd have the shoulder roll, and I'd say to the tight end, "Look, we'd like you to block the defensive end, but you know how that man blocking stuff goes. So I'm going to tell you this: I'm going to tell you the shoulder roll, and if that if that defensive end lets you go, you keep going." And you just build a wall, and the guard will see that, and he'll trap that guy. And guard, you're gonna come, you're gonna come off that tight end's butt. But if you can shoulder roll and dig that defensive end, okay, create what we call an angle. Okay, so think about this. I'm the tight end, okay, and I got a six technique right in front of me. It's a pain in the butt for me. I, you know, I'm going to block them. If I could do that, we'll just do that all day. I got an overhang right here that the guards probably got to block. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my game step, roll the shoulder, and then dig him or chip him, depending on how he's actually playing. But if I can grab him, dig him, and tear him in, and he'll come with me a little bit. What I'm saying to you is the dig, because I don't have an angle, the dig creates an angle. Okay? And once I have an angle, I got a chance. Right, so I roll that shoulder and then come back to it using my circular force and all that sh all that strength. Did you see that video I showed you? The bowlers bowling with two mm -hmm. hands. Oh, we're doing. We're using this. It's, an, it's just circular force. It's a way to make force. This stuff is way stronger than any of this. It's way stronger, and it has nothing to do with how heavy he is. You, when you're trying to flip him up, it's how heavy is he? Well, this thing has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with it. It's just I'm under him. He can't hit me. And I give him one of these, and I have an angle. And I'm going to either put him between my feet or put my foot right down in the middle of his crotch. Guard go out and trap that overhang. Sniffer lead through. We're in good shape. Now, of course, people got to block. But, you know, tackle's got to block the three technique or, or the four eye. You know, he's got to block them. But um, 
That's that's the play I'd go to the the grace. I mean, so you would insert a tight end. You would add a tight end to make I, them. I don't. I well, you can run to open edge too. See, that's that's the thing that that I wanted to really talk to you about. So, yeah, because that's how Lane Kiffin ran it. Uh, was he he blocked? He didn't have a tight end. He just blocked down with the tackle on the four. I pulled the front side guard and then an H from the backside wrapped. To well, a running you, back getting the ball from the backside. If you if you remember the Michigan game uh, when they were in the playoff, they were having a hard time with that defensive end that that four eye, and they were they had been killing everybody, but they were having a little trouble blocking this guy and washing him down. Now, like I said, if he's looking at the guard and the guard pulls, he'll he'll widen on him. If you can get this guy off in the three by one. Okay, if you can get him off, the guard's gonna wrap on nothing. But <clears throat> one way or the other, you gotta figure out how to move this cat and keep him from going to the outside. The, the way the play should be run is like this. Let's say you're in the pistol. Okay, he's gotta mesh with this cat right here. He's gotta mesh with this cat. So I would start him right. We we would always start him B gap. I would I'd start him butt of the guard, okay, the tailback, and give this guy a chance to get around it, okay, trap his ass, dig him, and I'd say to this kid, look, if if he, you think he's if you think he's more nose up and you think you got a chip and you can chip through, you can shoulder roll, chip that in and get to the backer, that's okay too, because the rapper will, the rapper will blow him up, the rapper will get the end. Okay, and then these guys, it's just fast scoop. We're we're gonna, we're not gonna dick around. We're not red light. And we're not doing any of that stuff. It's just get out of the way because you're gonna get killed. If if this guy washes the down block down, you're gonna get killed. So you gotta get through. You pierce. You pierce. Okay, you're probably gonna patch you this end, but you're looking for that run through. He, you got the nose. You're getting you're getting the second level. You're going for that backbacker, and off we go. Yeah, why it asks ask about if the plow hammer and stuff are always predetermined on C gap zone no. versus an oaky or just done on the fly. Wow, that's high level. That's high level for freshman ball. Why he's he's playing. He's put. He's watching videos. You're, he's doing you're, what you said, Coach. Watch the videos on the fly, baby. You're on the fly, why? You know, it's a toolbox. To me, I give you I give the kids the tools and they apply it. And if they apply it right and it works, great. And if they apply it the way they want to and it works, great. And if it and if they don't apply it, then I say, Well, why didn't you apply it? And uh, if they use the wrong tool and it works, great. If they use the right tool, it works great. It's just gotta work. <laughs> it's just gotta work. It's just gotta work. So if this guy says to me, I can just block down on him, okay. You know, because he's really a three, he's playing it more like a three technique. Okay, I'm good. You you block down him. We got him blocked. We got him blocked. Everybody's good. I, I why am I gonna? I'm not gonna force you to do something that that you don't need to do. But if he's playing on on the tackle, you know, it's a two. He's a two gap guy. He's, you know, he's gonna jump outside. He's gonna do this. And am I going to be able to just knock him back? I don't know. But with the shoulder roll, I avoid I avoid his force for a moment and then come back with circular force. Okay. Yeah, you, know, you could you could tell me I'm crazy, but uh, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm, I know I'm crazy, but I ain't that crazy. Yeah. I mean, coach, are you surprised that coach McNally has 10,000 followers on Twitter? When they when you know the Twitter thing's blown up a little bit, you know they, people aren't using it as much. But I don't know if, if a lot of football guys are using it. But when they figure out he's on it, he's going to have a hundred thousand. He's he's like the Donald Trump of football. Yeah, he is. He's the Donald Trump of football. Yeah. So yeah, they, when, once they figure out he's up there and he's the pro, the biggest problem he seems to have is. People are coming at him with so much stuff. He, who do you answer? You know, who do you who do you respond to? He's got he's got a lot. He he told me 
these guys in Hawaii had sent him some T-shirts. And he was so excited that he got some T-shirts. And he said, do you think that some more people on Twitter will send me some more T-shirts? And I said, Coach, you've already got two walk-in closets. You've got about 5,000 T-shirts. This guy's got the biggest T-shirt collection of anyone I've ever seen. But he likes T-shirts. Yeah. I mean, have you ever seen his T-shirt collection, Coach? I, I never have, no. Yeah, he, he took a video of his bathroom for me, showed me all his bathroom and the McNally dunk, and then he showed me both of his walk-in closets of nothing but T-shirts. Well, you, do you know? Do you know he was he was one of the, one of the staff members uh, when when Marshall when the airplane went down and they 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 started football game. You know, he was one of those guys. Yeah, he, they yeah they they hired him. He's in the movie. He told me. Yeah, yeah I mean, man, do you and, think he still has his T-shirt from Marshall? I bet you he does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he still got it. No question. Yeah. He's got T-shirt. He's got every. I mean, he's probably got helmets. He's probably got helmets from every place. It's the grace. I, Coach, he put something on Twitter here. This was his mantra. I just saw this. He tweeted this just a little bit ago. He said, this is what he said. He goes, he goes, mantra, undersized walk-on lineman at University of Buffalo, earned scholarship, lettered three years, two-year starter, took business, hated it. Went to grad school as a GA in education. Freshman coach, 1968. O-line coach, 1969 on. Vowed no one would work harder. 55 years later, still busting ASS. Mouse emoji. That's Donald Trump of the Donald Trump of football. The Donald Trump of football. Yeah, 55 yeah, years Trump. later. He's right. still busting tail. How how many how many followers can can he get? As many as will find out. Yeah, yeah. he's got, he's up to ten point one thousand now. He's got a yeah. hundred in a day. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and it's all because of you. No, I'm I'm just I'm just a pawn in history. Yeah, I'm just yeah. a little piece yeah. on the chessboard, Coach. You, you got him on. You got him Man, on. Man, my greatest accomplishment. <laughs> Yeah. Make football great again. Wyatt, did you know that Wyatt is actually taking coaches' videos from Twitter and he's putting them all together in groups on YouTube? How many hours have you worked on this, Wyatt, and what day are you up to? It took him – he's he's screen recording every single one of his videos. I'm more power to him if he can do that. He's 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 organizing them all, Coach, by yeah, category. But why be, you bet you better save those bangles. That's right. Uh practice tape. Yeah. Because uh Mike gets sued. The daughter of Michael Brown. Of Mike Michael's Brown. NFL films, you might get sued. He's only up to March 8th, coach. He's only he's got a hundred or some already done. <laughs> Hey, you're on your own, brother. He said, "That I mean, what that guy Wyatt? I mean, he has taken on a very large task to take all the videos that Coach McNally has posted. I mean, he's only been on Twitter, and he sent seven thousand tweets in three months. <laughs> he set a record." Oh God. Yeah, the Donald Trump, the Donald Trump of Twitter, the Donald Trump of Twitter, the we Donald Trump of football Twitter. Coach, we should Facetime him. No, <laughs> let's Facetime him. No, you think he'll no, answer? No, he might. Let's Facetime him, Coach. See how he's doing. Go ahead. Ask him how many pull-ups he can do. He's up to eight. Perfect. Eight perfect pull-ups. He's probably watching. That's why he's not answering. Coach McNally is probably done for the day on Twitter. He might be asleep. Like, I almost fell asleep. You're, you're the only guy that's ever caught me almost about to fall asleep, Coach. 
You're you really tired. paying attention. Well, you know, I'm sitting here. Man, 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 man. How I could you tell? You. What was I doing? Do an imitation of me. <laughs> you, were doing, you were going like this. My daughter calls it the long blink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. In that, in that uh, case, why don't we wrap this thing up? Unless there's more questions, why don't we call it a – Why? Do you have any questions? <laughs> you have Coach's phone number. I think he works for the CIA, Coach. I think he's a – He's a government guy. Nah, he's got my good. phone number. He's got Coach McNally's. I put dude. Coach McNally's address on Twitter, Coach. I oh. said for everybody to send him a T-shirt. <laughs> he put my my address on Twitter, told everybody to send me $5 cash in the mail. I didn't get any money. He said, well, everybody's got $5 in their wallet. I said, Coach, somebody carries cash. Except me. Yeah, he's got it. And he said, everybody's got a stamp. I said, Coach, it'll cost a dollar to send the envelope. DJ Mo, DJ Mo's laughing. Yeah, I'm, I'm funny, man. You can just look at me and laugh. Coach, you're the best. It's well, I don't, know, I, don't know, I don't know what we got accomplished here today, but other than giving you a nap, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, as always, it's a pleasure. And uh, just, uh, you know, keep. Keep going where you what you're doing. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, a name. You, you ever consider? You ever have any strength coaches on? Strength coaches. Yeah. Yes, I have had a few. Who do you got, Coach? Okay, uh, David Feely. Uh, let, let me. I'll send you the stuff. Yeah, just just text me, him, Coach. Yeah, I, to get I talked to him you. about this tonight. I said, look, I said uh, you need to go on this on this thing and just talk about what you do. Uh, he, you know, I mean, I, I haven't worked with with a better a better coach, period, than this guy. And uh, you know, Where did you work with him, Coach? Ball State. But he's been, uh, you know, he's been a bunch of different places, and he's really, uh, really pretty good. And I – I can't tell you what he's done for uh, for players in terms of confidence and strength and conditioning. He's, a, you know, he'd be good good guy to have on. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send you stuff. I already I talked to him. I said you need to go on this thing, and you know he needs people need to, to know who he is. So. Yeah, that'd be great, Coach. Okay. Well, thank you, Coach. I'll, I'll let you know when people start asking me to get Strollo back on. Nah, I, where can, I think, you, but, where can I people think, get up with you on YouTube? I, guys, I don't know. I, once in a while, I get a phone call, get emails. You know, sometimes guys will come visit. You know, I don't know, but you know, just uh, I think I think I've given you all I got. You know, I just want to hear somebody say. Now, my man Manello, you know, he uses he uses some of that shoulder roll stuff. I want to hear somebody else using it. I think it's I think it's something that that really can help you. Yeah, so, that, that was a great talk. Yeah, he, he was excellent. I told, you, I told you. He was he's, an excellent coach. He's fabulous. He had everything, man. He had, he had the Crowther in the weight room. He showed it, then he showed the kids doing it, then he showed film, and then he went back. He had everything. Man, he he was very thorough. He's he's great. He's great. He was a great player. He's a great guy, and he's, uh, you know, hell of a coach. I'm glad you. I'm glad you got him on there. Yeah, coach. Thank you, coach. I'll text you. All right. All right. All right. See you. Thank you. Get, get a little sleep, would you? Yeah, coach. I've all been right. going since 9 a.m. What is it? It's almost 12 hours. Go get so eight. I think no. We started at eight o'clock. Never mind. I've been going over 12 hours. All right. Well, time, See you, to, coach. Time to get a uh, Miller late. No yes. Late. No coach, problem. I don't drink, Coach. If I drank, I wouldn't be – I'd be in prison. <laughs> if I drank, I would be in prison. Me and Coach McNally, we don't drink. And there's a reason for that. Well, that – say no more. You're in good yeah. shape. <laughs> there's a reason. Because we. I would be in the penitentiary. Well, there's no well, doubt about it. You don't want that. Yeah, Coach. Thank you. Yes, sir.